Hey everybody, Ronaman here for episode 2 of my Let's Play tutorial series. Uh, so in last episode we set up, well everything you see, we set up a furnace, uh, we set up a stationary battery, we set up solar power logic, uh, all these crafting stations, and on this episode we will aim to um, do some atmospherics. Oops, that was plot, not right. There we go. Uh, which means sending power to our our pipe bending unit. I'd like to, I don't think I'll finish atmospherics this episode, but I'll work towards it. Uh, so another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another battery. And this additional battery will be the one that we swap with rather than the APC battery. And then I can leave the APC battery alone. Uh, we don't need to keep swapping to it and from it. Um, that doesn't really make any sense. So this big old large battery that I made with steel will now be part of the charger here. The APC will send power from it to that battery. And uh, we also want some additional cable coils. I'm going to crank some out because I'm basically out of cables. Use them all up. Uh, so what I'm envisioning here is three more or two more solar power panels. Uh, so that's another thing I'm going to make, um, but because it's almost sunset, <clears throat> it's not urgent for the next 10 minutes, because there is no sun for the next 10 minutes. Um, so instead of doing that, um, what I plan on having here, wow, I didn't realize that oxide so close to the base, is putting windows up and then pressurizing this area here for, um, for basically farming. Um, that is the plan, at least. So I guess while I'm standing here, I might as well uh, crank out some solar power panels. Oh, there. Nope, not that's not it. Solar panel. And I need a little bit more iron for that, which I'll get from my auto lathe. So I want two. Let's crank a second one out. I could have more than that, but I don't think I need more than that. And one of the worst things you can do in this game is to build out like a lot more complex things than you physically need because you waste a lot of time and energy um, doing it. So three panels I think is going to be enough. That's uh, 1.5 kilowatts during the day and unless my base is drawing 1.5 kilowatts um my batteries will you know as long as i'm drawing 750 meg uh, watts or less um i'll be gaining power so now all the power ports are wired to the battery i need data ports wired to these panels and the lovely thing about this batch writer that i have is every additional solar power uh, solar panel I add to my network will get automatically batch written to by that batch writer I set up last episode. So um, I do need to finish off the panels to add glass to them, which is here. Um, and then of course angle them towards sunrise, uh, but they will they're automatically already rotating um, the necessary amount. And now these three panels will send power to this battery, which will send power to the APC and the charger and everything else that we're running. Um, you can get, I would say you could safely put nine solar power panels on thin red cable. Um, on the thick cable, you can basically, let's see, doing the math, um, you could put 100, I guess, on the thick cables, and like, or 99 on the thick cables, and 9 on the uh, thin ones. So I'm not at risk at burning out um, uh, up there. Uh, let's put this glass away. Doesn't matter really where it goes, just as long as I remember where it went. Wire up this. 
So now the pipe bending unit can be flicked on. So basically what's happening here is the battery charger, which I'll turn off for now, um, is drawing all the power away from this battery. So I'm just sending one power source to another, but at a waste, um, because the APC requires a little bit of power to send power. Um, so it's not it's not 100% efficient. Uh, so our next project will be atmospherics. Um, and I kind of have to brainstorm how exactly I want to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is... Huh. I'm going to... The first thing we're going to need for atmospherics is probably kit tanks. Which cost 5 copper and 20 steel apiece. And we're going to need a bunch of them, unfortunately. So we're going to use a lot of the steel we've already made. Here's copper and steel, and I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do. So because I'm trying to keep things simple, um, I'm not going to bother separating every gas out. I'm going to group nitrogen and oxygen together, um, and then I'm going to separate CO2 and separate water. So that's three tanks, plus I'm going to have a uh, another tank for... Um, the furnace, so four tanks. I'm going to need four kit tanks. One for the furnace and, and three for the atmospherics, which is expensive. It's a lot of steel, a lot of copper. Now, if you ever accidentally make more than you've meant to, there is a recycler, uh, which will break down objects to their uh, constituent parts usually in a in or always in a sort of reagent mix that you'll then have to run through a uh, a centrifuge um so it's kind of a lengthy process so don't try not to make mistakes if you can help it um so i'm going to be storing three types of gases out here uh so it's pretty convenient that i have to have um some frames down for where they're going now, I'm going to store all this outside of the base because I'm, I'm basically designing a very simple starter base um, just to show the gameplay mechanics and not some illustrious mansion. I've done illustrious mansions and they're really not any technically difficult than the starter bases. They're just scaled up versions of it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just plop my three tanks down, which will be the gases, for the gases. And then uh, I'm going to plop down a tank for my furnace as well. And uh, I might move that around, but but it's there for now. Um, the next thing I need off of this is atmospherics, which is iron and gold, which I have over here. So just feed that in. And I'm going to need um, four atmospheric units. which is, again, a monstrous amount of copper. Just about all the copper I have left. And they don't stack, so I'm going to put them in my backpack for now so I can carry them all. And even... I mean, it sounds crazy, but this is sort of the diet light version. Um, even though it seems undeniably um, complex. So I'm going to put three filtration units, one per each tank over here. And then um, I have this fourth unit, which will be our air conditioner. But I haven't used that yet. Um, I don't have space for it quite yet. All right, let's see what we have here. We've got pipes. So the way this will work, the way filters work, and I guess I should get, um, well, we start off with a water filter, wherever it is. It is somewhere around here. Here it is. We start off with a water filter, and I need to make a few other filters. So I need to make, let's see, I need to make an oxygen filter. 
and a CO2 filter and a nitrogen filter. So let's start putting these in the backpack so I can carry them all. You start off with a CO2 filter, but it's in your it's in your suit. And uh, unless you want to suffocate, I don't advise you taking it out of there. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to filter all of the uh, stuff in the base so that oxygen and nitrogen together get clumped in this tank. Water goes into that tank. CO2 goes into that tank. Um, so the way this will work is the input will be from a vent, an active vent. But I'll just have a generic input there. Then the output here is oxygen and nitrogen because I have an oxygen and nitrogen uh, filter on. And that's the way filters work. The output is whatever you have the filter. And then the waste gas that I generate here will be um, anything that isn't oxygen and nitrogen, which means it's possibly water or possibly uh, CO2. And then I'll just mimic my pipe network that I made before, again, for the water. And if uh, I have piping that allow for it, although I'm just about out for the CO2 as well. So this output is going to be CO2 once I have some more pipes. But I am, like I said, currently out. So now we have um, all three solar panels rocking here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tablet, which currently doesn't have um, an analyzer in it, and toss in a network analyzer so that we can see if we are getting the amount of power we mean to. Um, so I mean it's jet packing up here and looking at these wires and these three panels are generating 1.3 kilowatts. Should be a little yeah, 1.4 kilowatts might even get up to 1.5 kilowatts. Um, so yes all three panels are working correctly and then those panels are sending 1.2 kilowatts down to this battery and then this APC is sending 155 watts out to the base to keep it running and now that we have the power on uh, and the lights on uh, I'm going to close this APC and turn up the battery charger to get a battery charging because I'm at medium charge right now and so I'm gonna want to get back to full so now that we have this filters, let's get a few construction kits or uh, construction kit pipes. So we needed some more pipes to finish off the network we had. We um, ran out. I'm not going to crank too many of these out right now. Um, just, just enough to finish this little filtration system. And then anything that's left over is waste. Um, so what I'm going to do with that waste is feed it, because I don't really care what it is, to the furnace. Which means I'm flattening out an area for my furnaces here. My, my furnace. I don't have more than one. So let's go ahead and remove the furnace and remove this tank because that, that's getting moved. Put it over there. Plop uh, some frames down. And actually, I'm going to make sure that I don't block the windows for hydroponics. So we'll put the furnace over here. And that will actually kind of be nice because the tank's already going to be set up in the in the in the right location. It looks intentional, right? It really wasn't. All right. And then we will have once I'm done putts and about a furnace. And this furnace, I'll be able to pressure regulate, um, and I'll show you how to do that in due time. Um, I'll be able to pressure regulate 
so that uh, it's always sort of the right pressure for the job. So I'm going to quickly pop the steel out and um, make some steel frames. So steel frames and steel sheets are cheaper than their iron counterparts, uh, which is another good reason to make steel. For instance, a steel frame is 2 grams, an iron frame is 4 grams. So it is a lot more expensive uh, to make things out of iron. Plus, it's uglier in the long run, and you'll see that in action in a moment. Um, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to have a pass event and an act event um, pulling air into the system. And then I'm going to have a pass event and an act event pushing air out of the system. Um, but for that, I need some way to put the vents on the walls, which is why I have these steel sheets. So let's get an act event. Some steel sheet sheeting. I need two act events and two pass events. And this will all make sense really, really soon. Um, once I have this set up, I can describe what I'm doing. I just can't describe without visual aids. All right, so these um, vents I want to keep as low as possible so they don't block the sun um, for the hydroponics. So the act event. I'll put here, and its pass event cousin is going to go just to the right of it. And it's not going to be the most pretty setup, um, because basically eventually I'm going to put windows there, so you'll see like piping in a window. It's it's going to be ugly. Um, oh, and I'm just about out of iron. I'll need to go mine some iron, because I believe I'm just about out. Um, I could also put the venting on the floor, I suppose. You know, that wouldn't be the worst idea. I'm going to go ahead and do that just to free up some floor space. Um, so I can put both of them right next to each other. No harm in doing that. And that way I don't even need this ugly frame here. All right, so we have an act event, pass event, and we'll mimic the setup on the other side. Making sure the pipe entrances face outwards. Um, actually, we'll need to move the pass events over one unit, as that will make sense in just a moment. Uh, but before we get there, we can hook up a few of the piping, a little bit of the piping. And like I said, it's a starter base. I would never have anything this atrociously ugly in uh, real life. Uh, well, not real life, but in, you know, in my actual playthroughs. This is just um, makeshift so that you can understand the uh, game mechanics. And really nothing more than that. Um, so we're going to need a little bit more iron because I'm just basically out. So let's let's get stock. We're low on copper, very, very low on iron. Um, so we'll go on a quick little run here, a quick little jaunt. Because it's daytime, it should be pretty easy to spot the stuff. Get up to a nearby hill. Take a gander. That's nickel. That looks like coal. So you can see the uh, battery light from pretty far away, which is another reason why I put the battery up up top. It's a nice little beacon for if you're ever lost. All right, so this is obviously copper in here. And it, uh, it'll, it'll play out. Soon it's going to be nighttime, which means I'll be able to smelt the stuff much faster on a furnace. Even though I just moved the furnace, uh, I can still use it, stoke it back up. Nope, that's silicon. I don't need that yet. Silicon is useful to make glass sheets and a few other sort of specialty items, but it doesn't have a lot of common um, mass applica applicative usage yet. Um, surprisingly enough, a lot of the circuit boards and logic stuff doesn't require silicon. Um, maybe that will change. It would not surprise me. Uh, but for now, it, it, it isn't a requiring um, element. 
for that stuff. Possibly because it's a little harder to smelt in a furnace, but it will smelt in the arc furnace, so I'm not sure exactly what that's about. All right, so I'll mine out this vein and then look for iron. Or mine out most of this vein if this keeps going. I don't want to spend forever mining copper, but we did need it. So the aim uh, of my... Um, of Oops, I got the silicon anyway. I really don't need it, so I'm just going to throw it. Uh, I'll pick it up. Just in case. Um, oh, and here's iron. I wonder if there's any... Oh, yeah, there's some more of it. Um, so the idea behind the vents, you have a passive vent that will be hooked up to a pressure regulator. So the way the pressure regulators work, there's two types. There's a regular pressure regulator and a back pressure regulator. And they very, very, very slowly adjust the pressure, um, either upstream or downstream, depending on their settings. Um and we'll be doing that through pass events. But the active events are going to be used to flood or vacuum out an area. Um, so let's say we have a farm, we have a little hydroponic tables, and accidentally um, some horrible toxic gases get released. Uh, we want to be able to flood or to vacuum out the toxic areas and then to replace it um, with um, the proper gases kind of as fast as we can. Um, and that's also true if you're like in in it you don't want to die to toxins right you want to be able to flush your much like how you can flush your helmet you want to be able to flush your base as well and um, the smaller the room the easier it is so i would say for every like two by two square you're gonna want like a vent or two um even one square per vent if you're really paranoid of toxic t toxicity um isn't necessarily overkill. What's overkill is the amount of copper I just got. I've got 200. I'm really looking for more iron. But this copper node, just this copper vein, just keeps going and going and going and going. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, at this point, I need to start storing um, some of it in my backpack. So I'm running out of space. And uh, I do have a power low indicator. Oops, ran out of space there as well. Let's store a good chunk of it in the backpack. There's no harm in storing it in the backpack. It's not like it's going to melt or anything. Unlike uh, the oxides and volatiles. But I believe it's probably nighttime by now outside. So even that stuff wouldn't melt. And it's not really harmful as long as you don't have your helmet up. Like if you're inside your base and you have like oxides in your hand or volatiles in your hand and then you enter a room that's warm, it will start melting and releasing, you know, toxic gases into the atmosphere. That's dumb. Don't do that. But but yeah, other than that, as long as your helmet's down, it's just going to blow you around a little bit. It's not really going to kill you. Because you can always put your down helmet down in a hurry. You know, big deal. Right, that's, that's probably enough copper for me for now. I'm just going to get out of here. That's, that was a whole lot of copper. So the base is right there. It's not nearly enough iron. I really meant to get more of it. So I'm going to make sure I know where my base is. And... Look around a little bit more for some supplementary iron. Oh, don't want to fall before I head on home. More copper. Wow. Normally I'd be praising it. But for whatever reason, this map is a little strange. And all the copper, and none of the iron that I usually see. Granted, it is nighttime, so it's... A little bit more difficult. So you can still see that flicker of the light of the battery. It does make it easy to try to find home. And although my my um my soup power is low, um it's not cr it's not very low or critically low. At critically low, things will start to shut off, um which is not good. 
but it, you know, if I hit very low, I'll, I can head home in a hurry. I know where home is. I've been keeping an eye on it. Oh, wow, more copper. Come on, map generation. More copper. Copper I've already mined. Give me a little bit of iron. Hook a brother up. So one thing I noticed is all my flares have burned out, which is a good thing. I don't really like them on. They burn in the whole time. More copper. Fancy that. Whoa. Let's not fall. Some coal. Because I am not in current dire need of steel. We can pass that up. Some silver. Likewise, I don't need electrum. Silver has no purpose other than to make electrum. And electrum is not something I need at the moment. So although it would be smart to mine that steel if I was playing for real. Because I'm in a let's play and I'll probably never need electrum. Or only need a little bit of it. Um, I don't have a lot of pack space left. So I'm keeping that pack space for iron. Hopefully I'll make it back in time to use my furnace. So it'll be a lot faster melting this in the furnace than waiting at the arc furnace for a year and a day for it to finish off. So I'm gonna just try to fill the backpack up with iron so I won't have to do that for a while while I work on atmospherics. The big ticket items of atmospherics is already dealt with. The uh, the um, tanks and the uh, atmospheric kits. Those are the real expensive ones. They require steel. They require copper. You know, they're 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 pricey. Um, and that stuff's already been built and out of the way. So now we're just um, supplementing it with regulators and vents and the like, which is not nearly as expensive. So we're about to fill up our bag. Um, I can hold some of this for now, just so that we have a little bit more storage. And I'm not going to be OCD about mining it all out. I'm going to do a cursory kind of look around, make sure I'm not obviously missing any. It quits. So nothing, nothing, no messages. I'm sure there is more left, so it wasn't very thorough, but we'll call this good. Um, so one little tip: if you have a unstoked furnace entirely, um, you can put your metals in first. And that way, it's not so hard. They don't cool, like, you're not changing the temperature of the furnace uh, before you fire it up. Oh, I guess there's iron right here. I'll have to remember that. Is this... Oh, and these flares. Oh, and there's iron there. Yeah, there was a lot of iron around the base that I was kind of missing. No worries. Just make sure not to combine iron and copper together. That's going to be a bit of an annoying annoyance to separate them from one another. It's too bad there's like no step stool. Um, so this was all my iron. So now I'm going to take I'm going to take four volatiles. I know I, I said two and two. Or two and one, but taking a little bit more. Firing it up. Boom. Nice and hot. And create all the that iron. And now for the copper.
which we have a lot of. I think that's all of it. Yep. Come on. There we go. I'm hopping up and down. I'm so eager. Oh, that's a lot of copper. That's good. All right, pull the trigger on that. And this will keep us going for a while now. I won't have to do any return trips or anything like that. All right, so let's uh, switch our battery out. And then we were working... What were we doing? All right, so we had pass events. So we need um, pressure regulators. We need two of them. And that is here. And I'll explain how to use those. And then we're going to need... Uh, we already have the active vents, so we'll need gas mixers. But I'm not going to build those quite yet. We'll need one gas mixer. I love the red hot glow. So you have to decide uh, which way is intake, which one's output. The intake I already have over here. So the intake um, will be back pressure regulated. Um, and I'll kind of explain what that means. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have all of the dials on the outside of the base, and then the in uh, the the flow in is going to be pressure regulated. Um, so let me just set this up, and then I can kind of explain what this means. So what this means is if I set the pressure here to 105 kPa, what it will do is as long as there's pressure behind this vent of over 105, it will actively push air into the passive vent into the base. And likewise, if this back pressure regulator is set to, let's say, 110, if there is pressure on this vent here, which is inside of my farm, of greater than 110, it will push air towards the filters. Um, so that will keep my base nice and steady at somewhere between 105 and 110 kPa. Now these vents here, however, will actively pull as much air from my base as possible. And I'm actually going to make two more vents just to do just so that it, it does it quickly, um, because active vents are not super expensive, um, and I might as well pull as much air as I can. So let's crank out two more active vents. Now I'm running low on gold. That's my that's my limiting resource now that I just mined all that stuff. But I don't want to have to do any additional mining anytime soon, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be careful with my gold. Um, so we're gonna add two more active vents in the corners here, uh, which means changing some of the piping that we have. I guess I can smelt this silicon, or I'll just keep it in the furnace. The the silicon smelts at really high temperatures, uh, 900. Um, uh, but I'll just I'll put it through the arc furnace. Um, all right, so I switch tool belts so I can access these vents, and this active vent over here and the one over there can't run through a back pressure regulator. Um, it will burst the pipes, so we have to route it around it. Um, I'm going to need some more piping. I'm going to need a bunch more pipes for this. So let's crank some out. And the reason for it is this vent will pull air from the room. Um, well, not this vent. This vent is the outflow vent. Uh, but this vent will pull air from the room as fast as it pretty much can. And uh, what will happen if it's behind a uh, if it's behind a pressure regulator, the pressure regulator won't be able to keep up this pressure regulator, this back pressure regulator. And what will happen is the pipes have the possibility of becoming um, hyperpressurized and bursting, which is uh, not a very good scenario to be in. You don't want burst pipes because then you lose all the gases that were in them. And then you have to, you know, find the pipe that bursted and replace it, and it's 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 a bit of a pain. So um, we're gonna put the regular corner back there, and then 
this we can set as a t-junction and we will um, pop the pipe out a bit to meet with the t-junction like I said it's going to take a little bit more pipes and this way This way we can't hyperpressurize. So what happens here, these vents, when I when I trigger a panel, will pull all the air from the base and push it into these pipes here and feed it to the filter, which then feeds through the filtration system. So if I have like an accidental uh, gas leak of some sort, um, it gets resolved pretty quickly. You know, it gets resolved nice and neat. Um, by filtering it all out. Now, a veteran player is not going to like accidentally leak gas, but if you're playing multiplayer or you're new to the game or um, the composition of your atmosphere in your base is constantly changing, which for me it will be because I will live in it and I'll have plants in it, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wise thing to invest in, a nice flushing uh, system. And then anything that isn't CO2, water, or oxygen, and nitrogen gets put into this storage tank here, which will be, I'll have to move the furnace forward a little bit, but will be our furnace's regulation tank. And that, that the only thing that's left is basically pollutants and volatiles, um, which, you know, you can't, you can't, won't, and wouldn't want to breathe anyway. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of mining here because some of where the piping I want it to go is um, obscured by this terrain. I don't want to deform the terrain too badly, but I want to get some of this out of the way. It's probably enough. And then we're basically just mimicking what I did on the other side over here. Um, And this is to put um, put gas back into the base. This is the outflow um, area. So this here will be a T-junction, just like on the other side. And this will be a nice little corner. And then I'm going to run out of piping. Which is why we had all that iron. And I bet uh, sometime in the future there'll probably be steel piping too, which is either cheaper or can take more pressure or both. But for now, there's only uh, iron piping, and that's fine. Um, it's sufficient. And it can hold up to uh, 60 MPA. Not KPA, but MPA. Uh, which is a whole lot of pressure, if you ask me. Um, especially when you have it feeding to tanks. So now that we have that set up, um, we need a gas mixer. And I'm actually going to uh, change which filter is which here. I'm swapping the CO2 and the water because we want CO2 closer to the other gases. And, and you'll see why in a, a moment. Um, so I'm going to need a few more pipes and gas mixer. So we'll crank out those pipes first. And then we'll do a gas mixer. So in this game, you need a certain concentration of oxygen to be able to breathe. Um, so like, let's say your base was 50% um, oxygen, but very, very low pressure. You're going to have a hard time breathing. Or if it was 100 kPa pressure, but only 10% oxygen, you're going to have trouble breathing. Um, if I was to do this base properly, quote unquote, air quotes, um, I would filter off the oxygen separately into its own tank. Um, but I'm not doing it properly because most of the gases you're going to accumulate in the game um, are oxide, which is um, melt by melting oxide, which is which is just 90% oxygen. Um, so the reason I'm not bothering to siphon off my um, my uh, oxygen to a separate tank is because I'm going to have oxide. Um, 
that's how I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna uh, pressurize my base. And I know oxide is majority um, majority oxygen. So what I'm gonna do here is cut two holes into these tanks here, into these pipes rather, that lead to the tanks, um, and put little T junctions then. And then angle them at one another. And let's put a gas mixer. And we want the gas mixer to flow that way. So let's hook up the pipes to the gas mixer. And now we can choose, uh, we'll basically choose between how much nitrogen oxygen mix plus how much CO2 that we want in our air here. And this actually has to be, a, uh, no, the T was fine there. I should have left that. but this has to feed to the bottom. So there's input one and input two. Uh, what a gas mixer does is it takes two different gas sources and then it mixes them by what percentage you want. So um, I'm gonna say 90% oxygen nitrogen mix, which is input one, and 10% CO2 mix, which is input two. And that way we have a 10% CO2 atmosphere for our plants. Um, I'm mostly pressurizing the base for the plants. So then this gas here will get fed to the pipes over here. Um, might need just a little bit more piping to finish it off. And then I also want a volume pump as well. Because uh, there's a lot of volume in that pipe. That pipe um, that pipe is pretty long. And what a volume pump will do is it will push all of the air towards the end of the pipe. Um, so that it's accessible. Uh, rather than like an equilibrium amongst the entire volume of the pipe. And it requires a little bit more power, but it will pay off in yield. So yeah, volume pump. I'm going to have it pump towards the filters and then plop this corner piece in. And we are just about done with that. Uh, so at this point, we need to wire things up for data and power. And um, then we're off running. So I'm going to say... Um, the, this side of the base will be on one APC. The other side of the base is going to be on a different APC. Um, I just have to figure out exactly how to put the APC down. I'm going to have to do some finagling here. Um, I'm going to physically push the APC here, but it will be a little bit of a weird roundabout way to get to that APC. I'm going to have to put cables through these walls, I think. Yeah, that. Uh, but that also means I'm almost out of gold, so it means using uh, what gold left I have uh, for some heavy cables. Um, I highly, highly advise... Oh, and I need some steel, too. I highly advise um, splitting a lot of your grid especially things that don't need to talk to one another. So these crafting stations and solar panels don't need to talk to atmospherics. There doesn't need to be communication between the two. So putting them on their own APCs is a perfectly legitimate and fine way of going about um, setting up your base. 
So I'm making another large battery for that APC. And then I'm going to make some heavy cables so we can start to charge this large battery, but it's going to charge in the APC anyway. And the way we're going to set this up is we're going to feed um, this heavy cable to that APC sort of through the, through the, uh, the, the frame. But as you can see, I'm running pretty low on gold, so I don't, yeah, I don't want to waste any if I can help it. All right, so six. Might need more than six, but we'll see. I'll probably need more than six. And this way, um, each APC will will control a different half of uh, our base. So there'll be the the atmospherics half and the like crafting half. Um, and that way, if atmospherics or crafting gets rather large and requires more power than... Yeah, I need one more cable than that. It requires more power than... Um, I'm going to make one additional cable because that half gram of gold is going to go to loss if I don't use it up. Um, so like, let's say my crafting station all of a sudden required everything was on one APC and everything started to require more than five kilowatts. Um, I'd have power shortages and bad ones. Um, I'd have a giant brownout and surges and um, possibly fires and not good stuff. Um, so this way, isolating it in its own little grids uh, keeps that nightmare scenario from, from occurring. And I've even built a base before where um, the entire, like the atmospherics alone costed more than five kilowatts. So, um, you know, it was required that I, uh, that I, I separate everything out, you know, really sort of effectively. All right. So now that that's all, uh, set up, uh, what kind of time do I have? 15 minutes left. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, we will weld the plates back. I keep getting stuck down there. Maybe it's time to fill that area in with sheets or something. Put those plates back, and then we can start running the cables. Um, we're obviously going to need more cables than we currently have, but we can start running the cables. And additionally, once we set up the panels and whatnot, um, any logic that we apply to this base will ha not have knowledge of the other half of the base. Um, so if I'm trying to set up logic, I won't have to talk to any of these logic units, because these logic units are on an entirely separate and different power grid, and therefore can't be communicated with, for good or for bad. And in this case, uh, I'm arguing that it's a good thing, because I don't like having to look through, you know, a hundred um, or more different uh, logic, um, um, you know, inputs to find the one I want, because I have such a complicated grid. So I'm going to angle this power, <clears throat> so it's a uh, accessible. Um, when it was angled down, it was not accessible. So these two vents are powered up. Um, obviously, the vents have nothing in the air, uh, so they're not going to work, but we're definitely going to need some more cables. So I mentioned the color of the batteries, but a solid green means it's not gaining or losing power. It's fully charged. Um, a flashing green red means it's losing power, and a flashing green blue means it's gaining power. So this one over here is definitely gaining power. Oh, no, it's it's fully charged. So that means if I open the battery up, it's going to be blue. Yep. Because it's fully charged. And that pulled uh, energy from the kit here and fully charged a large battery. Um, because that kit can store, uh, I think, like almost 10 times the amount that a battery can. I haven't done the, the literal math, but it's that's that's roughly what it's like. All right, so that's enough cables for now. I'm sure I'll need more, but 
I'll work. I'll use what it, what I have now. Work with what I have. Um, so what I'll do here is a little bit of magic, which is to run the cable underneath the the base um, in order to wire things up correctly. All this is eventually going to be under floorboards uh, and be invisible, so it's not a big deal. Uh, next, we oh we also have this here. Um, so let's try to send power over there with a three-way corner. And then we can send power over to that pump. Uh, actually, this needs to go this way because there's pipes in the way. Pipes and cables can only intersect straight pieces at a time, so these corner pieces are unintersectable. Alright, so now that pump has power. Um, the next things are the vents on the other side of the room, and that's kind of a simple hacky power uh, where we just run a cable from one side to the other. No problem there. Doesn't interfere with the airlock. That's one of the reasons why I have the airlock placed is um, so that I know because certain objects like the cable can't run through the bottom of an airlock. It can run through the top of an airlock but not the sides or the bottom. And there can't be anything around these edges either. Um, the airlocks are fussy about that. They don't like intersecting stuff. Uh, so we have the other, we have the intake vents on the other side, one um, lined up. We're going to need some more cables. And the beautiful sun has come up, so it's going to start charging. I guess now is probably a good time to switch our batteries out, because that battery was full, and we're starting to generate power. I tend to try to switch the batteries. Um, I mean, I think my power, the, the power grid we I have built here is is reliable enough that I can switch my batteries really as much as I want and as often as I want. It really won't make any discernible difference. Um, but a good um, sort of rule of thumb is to switch during the day when you're generating power because a battery charger could potentially drain a kit battery out fully if the kit battery doesn't have a lot of power left. And then if your kit battery drains out, it means it's not feeding your APCs and potentially your APCs could drain out and you could have a brownout in the base because you decided to switch your batteries during the night. It could happen. I, I'm not saying it's super likely to happen, but it's, it's, it is a, a possibility. It's not, it's not a non-zero chance of it happening. It's happened to me before. It's just, um, silly and, and quite avoidable if, uh, if, if you want to avoid something like that, it's it's really not hard to avoid. So we're going to do the same sort of under the under the frame power thing over here, just like we did on the other side. Whoa, super jump! Every now and then, you can super jump. I think it, super jumping is tends to be like when you're jumping through cables, you end up jumping a lot higher than normal. I'm not. A, I don't exactly know how to replicate it unfortunately, but it's something like that. So now this um, back pressure regulator has power. That pressure regulator has power. This flow pump has power. Um, I could put a flow pump here, but I don't think it's going to be necessary because these um, filters are going to pull air. It, it's only necessary here because of how long... Whoa, there we go. Super jump again. How long this piping is. And it's not even all that necessary. It, it will just help to replace the atmosphere a little bit faster. And then the <clears throat> remaining power grid that we have um, need to construct is these filters. And because all this stuff will be outside of the base, I'm really not going to make any attempt to hide the cabling. Um, it's going to be behind a wall and not seen. So in other words, I don't care that it's ugly. Uh, 
so what I'm doing is I'm just <clears throat> trying to get all the cables up and out so we have access to them from above. So as I said, uh, two, two straight things can intersect. That will work. Um, I know it looks weird, but it will function. Actually, I could have done that over here and might as well because it saves me some cables. Because this is a straight pipe above it and another straight pipe above it. Those are the only times uh, wires and, and the like can intersect is when they're straight on like that. Um, so that's all the units there. Um, then we have to run a cable over there. So we'll run it from here. It's totally an arbitrary side. But why not? So what we'll do is we'll have this corner piece go up. And yes, like I said, ugly, but all of this is going to be behind walls. Up and then start feeding power to the to the filters. And uh, these filters are not objects you're going to have to look at um, once you're done making them. It's You can keep them powered on at all times if you want. Um, you don't have to. Um, and if you don't want to keep them powered on, you can have power consoles. Basically a console... I haven't actually dealt with consoles yet, but a console is is like a built-in tablet in the wall, think iPad, um, where you can set up different consoles to do different things. Um, so you can have a power console, which allows you to turn things off remotely that's on the same data network. So if I set a power console up here, I could only flick off objects that are on this side of the APC that run off this wire and down if I set the console up over here. Um, so I could turn off the battery charger, for instance, uh, remotely, you know, through a touch of a button on a console. But I wouldn't be able to turn off the atmospherics over there unless I ran a, a, a data cable to the console from over there. Um, because that stuff's data is not on this network. This network is separate because of the two splitting APCs. All right, so there's some more power cables as I'm running out of time almost having this wired up though which is nice because at that point at this point I really I need to do a little bit of stuff for the furnace but most of this is pretty pretty good to go uh, let's go ahead and um, give us some proper flooring which means airtight flooring which means grabbing more iron sheets. Now, there's no harm in using iron frames that you start with. Steel frames are more efficient, but the iron frames that we started with are free. Uh, and unless you're going to recycle them back into raw iron, um, it's not really a problem using it. So we've we've um, have a nice floor now. Um, everything should turn on um, so at this point we need some walls and windows um, so wall units are a little expensive to make but they're uh, more attractive than these iron walls that you start with far more attractive than the iron walls so on the auto lathe uh, which means we need to move resources over from one to the next do I have stuff in here no on the auto lathe, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll over to construction walls, and it's four grams of iron, one gram of copper per wall. They're expensive. Um, they're probably too expensive right now, if I'm being honest. They should be a little bit cheaper because steel is cheaper, so I don't know why the walls are so expensive. Um, but yeah, they're they're pretty expensive. But we're we're going to need um, we're going to need a, a few of them. So I'm going to craft them up. I'm just putting a tracking beacon here in case I want it. I usually keep it next to my um, battery charger. So as I said, uh, we're going to put walls back there to hide that ugliness. Um, then have windows for the roofs in the farm.
and that's all the that's not all the windows we're gonna have. Then we're gonna have windows facing east and west. I'm just kind of grabbing these piecemeal. Uh, windows facing east and west, like this, and then um, a few more walls. I think five more will do. Actually, more than five. We're, we're going to need some for the airlock as well. So nine more walls. One, two, three, four. So these walls are going to go to hide our logic there that we don't have to look at. Um, and on that wall there. Oof, let me through. Come on. Um we're going to save four walls for the airlock. And then make some steel sheets. And I hate walking through this airlock. So what these steel sheets are going to do is they're going to finish off these walls and oops, I cycled that on and off. They're a lot more attractive than the iron walls. The iron walls uh, look like someone panicked and started welding things together. Uh, very hacky and, and bad. Whereas these um, these built walls are, um, by comparison, uh, quite attractive, I'd say. And, it, and they hide the things behind them. So as you can see, that we'll be able to hide all this logic crap. And this room here, eventually the, the vents will be poking out of the floors, but it will hide uh, most of the vents as well. Um, so now, to finish this room off, to make it airtight, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 glass sheets and iron sheets. So I don't know how much iron sheet we have left. Yep, we have more than 10. So we don't even have to make any, uh, which is another perk of having a very small and efficient base. Um, so you finish these off by first putting iron down and then glass down. Why not steel? I don't know. But iron instead. So these windows are actually very, very expensive to construct. It's five iron and one glass. Uh, but now we have some, somewhat of an airtight space. As you can see, um, I'm going to have to tear some of these walls down because I still am um, going to be working behind them. Uh, so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take some of this water and feed it uh, to our hydroponics. Um, but uh, that's going to be on next episode because I'm, I'm pretty much out of time here. Um, so on this episode, just to recap, we built... Pretty much we built the, the rest of the hydro, the atmospherics and we walled it all off. Um, and I might actually, before I finish this, I might actually raise the ceiling up to two units. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. But um, thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, on next episode, we'll probably raise the ceiling and add in some airlocks and uh, maybe even get pressurization going and hydroponics going. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped. If you have any questions or comment or feedback, uh, let me know. And uh, good luck on your own playthroughs. Adios, guys.